Los Angeles is known as the home of the stars, where the spotlight shines the brightest thanks to Hollywood. But along its Sunset Strip lies what many call a home for the biggest rock stars on the planet, the Rainbow Bar and Grill. Simply known as the Rainbow, the place is one of the most recognizable landmarks in rock and roll history. Countless rock stars had come to the Rainbow to hang out, get drunk, and form bands since the 70s, and especially in the 80s when glam metal boom and sex, drugs, and rock and roll was the lifestyle of choice. Needless to say, the Rainbow has witnessed many of the rock world's sleaziest tales, stories of debauchery, and celebratory tales behind the scenes. But how did a simple bar and grill like the Rainbow become a place of such importance in rock history? Keep watching as we explore the history and significance of the Rainbow, from its early days to its peak years, and all the wildest anecdotes that have happened within its walls. Founding the Rainbow. Known as the place for the biggest rock stars to hang out, the Rainbow has cemented its legacy as one of the most important places in the development and evolution of rock culture. However, it was never meant to be a rock star's den during its early years. The building that is now known as the Rainbow has been standing since the 1920s. Initially, it was called the Mermaid Club. Then, during the 30s, Alan and Charlotte Dale rechristened it as the Villanova Restaurant with the financial backing of Charlie Chaplin and film director Vincente Minnelli. During the Villanova years, Alan Dale had a no press allowed policy. Despite this, it quickly became a hangout spot for Hollywood stars at the time. Many icons from the golden age of Hollywood frequented the restaurant, and legend has it that Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio had a blind date there. It's also the place where Minnelli proposed to his future wife, Judy Garland. Even before it became the Rainbow, the building already had a star-studded history. The Villanova flourished for almost 32 years. In 1972, it was sold to Elmer Valentine, Lou Adler, and Mario Maglieri, who renamed it to the Rainbow. Many have said that the new name was intended as a tribute to Judy Garland, but it's actually because the term Rainbow in the 70s referred to peace and freedom, although the name still works as a tribute to Garland. They initially wanted to name the new restaurant over the Rainbow, but couldn't get the proper clearances, so they settled with a simplified Rainbow. The new restaurant officially opened on April 16, 1972, and did so in a big way by throwing a party for Elton John, who'd just begun building his star power at the time. Not long after, it became a favorite spot for the most famous artists of that era. Rock stars and celebrities take over. Initially, the Rainbow targeted executives and business people in the recording industry, but other musicians followed suit when Led Zeppelin frequented the spot in the early 70s and essentially turned it into a second home of sorts. Within a short period of time, many artists and bands were hanging out at the Rainbow, drinking, smoking, chatting, and engaging in all the vices that defined a rock star back in that era. Motorhead's Lemmy, who also treated the bar as a second home and even bought an apartment within walking distance, recalls in the book Straight Whiskey, the first time I ever came into the rainbow, one of Led Zeppelin's roadies was screwing some chick on the table downstairs. Some of the most notable names who hung out in the bar during that time included the Who's drummer Keith Moon, Ringo Starr of the Beatles, Mickey Dolenz, Harry Nielsen, and Alice Cooper. Under the latter's leadership, they formed a drinking club that became known as the Hollywood Vampires. The initiation to get into the club was to outdrink all the others, a challenging task considering that this was the 70s when everyone drank way more than the kids today. The club the club was often joined by other artists including Ringo's fellow Beatle John Lennon, Keith Emerson, Mark Boland, Bernie Taupin, Klaus Vormann, and Iggy Pop. A number of them were inducted into the club as honorary members. Although its members got obviously drunk night after night, the sessions did produce some artistic results, such as Lennon's 1974 album, Walls and Bridges. A plaque listing the members of the Hollywood Vampires remains on display at the Rainbow today. Esteemed record producer Kim Fowler was also a frequent guest of the Rainbow, especially in 1975 when he formed the influential all-girl group The Runaways. The band Rainbow, which was composed of rock heavyweights such as Deep Purple's Richie Blackmore and Ronnie James Dio took its name from the bar. But the rainbow didn't just attract musicians. It attracted all kinds of celebrities, including adult film stars. Indeed, the rainbow welcomed everyone from any entertainment-related industry, while also allowing them to partake in the vices that came with a rock and roll lifestyle. However, things got to another level when the 80s rolled around. The rainbow in the 80s. 
The 80s was when the musical landscape shifted in favor of heavy metal. LA's Sunset Strip became the breeding ground for glam metal, a decade-defining genre characterized by hairspray, makeup, spandex, and rock and roll excess taken to the maximum. Members of bands such as Motley Crue, Rat, Poison, and Wasp were regulars of the bar. Axl Rose and Slash of Guns N' Roses also often visited for chats, drinks, and much more. The glam metal scene of the 80s was pretty rowdy and littered with tales of sex and excessive alcohol and substance abuse. Michael Maglieri, the current owner of the Rainbow and son of the original co-owner Mario Maglieri, recalls having seen people like Poison guitarist Cece DeVille get so wild that it was out of place. According to Michael, Axl Rose Rose and Van Halen singer David Lee Roth got so out of control that they were thrown out of the bar numerous times. Many bands of the era paid tribute to the rainbow through their lyrics. The bar was mentioned in songs such as Wasps, Sunset and Babylon, LA Guns Vampire, and Red Cross's Peach Kelly Pop. It was also featured in Guns N' Roses music videos for November Rain, Don't Cry, and Estranged, released during the early 90s. Although it was mostly known as a heavy metal hangout, the Rainbow also had other celebrity guests in the 80s. Michael remembers actors Robin Williams, Robert De Niro, and John Belushi visiting the bar in 1982. According to him, it was the same day when Belushi died of an overdose. Belushi ate his last meal at the bar before he tragically passed away. The Rainbow Today the glam bands of the 80s were the last generation to firmly leave their legacies in the bar. When the 90s came around, alternative rock and Seattle-based grunge scene had replaced hair metal as the biggest thing in rock music. These bands eschewed the debauchery of the glam scene and led a different vision of rock and roll. It's perhaps why not many of them became regulars at the bar. Despite this, the rainbow remained operational and continued receiving visitors. Perhaps the most notable rock icon to frequent the bar throughout the years was Lemmy. The Motorhead singer and bassist was known to spend much of his downtime at the bar. If he wasn't seen drinking his Jack Daniels there, he was at a video poker machine. Lemmy indeed treated the rainbow as a home away from home and was often seen there when Motorhead wasn't on tour. He remained a frequent visitor of the bar until his final years. In 2016, a year after his death, the rainbow unveiled a statue of Lemmy at the bar's back patio where he often hung out. It was then renamed Lemmy's Lounge in his honor. In 2017, the Rainbow was inducted into the Hall of Heavy Metal History, alongside Motorhead, Scorpions, Ronnie James Dio, Randy Rhodes, and Metal Blades Record. A few months later, the Rainbow's co-owner, Mario Maglieri, passed away at the age of 93. Decades after its founding, the Rainbow Bar & Grill remains a staple of the Los Angeles Sunset Strip. It's one of the most recognizable venues in the area, along with legendary clubs such as the Troubadour and the Whiskey A Go Go. But despite its beginnings in the 70s, the Rainbow will forever be remembered as one of the centerpieces of the 80s glam metal scene. More than just another bar and grill in LA, the Rainbow is a time capsule that houses a lot of memorabilia from that era and a crucial component of what made rock and roll controversial to some and legendary to many.